shooting here? Well, we, um, we've we set up a, our studio in here, and we're going to be shooting quite a bit of different things. So we're going to be um, having panel discussions down here in collaboration with the exhibit. Um, we're going to have live tapings. And what this is actually is a live taping. So we've basically brought in our broadcast studio to the basement of Storefront for art and architecture, and um, we're going to be taping stuff. Tonight, we're going to meet people, because it's the opening. So we're anyone who wants to venture down the scary stairs can come in and read a fortune, read a fortune into um, the microphone, speak, say your name, and everything is documented. Everything is about um, documenting um, storefront and where we are now, um, kind of in celebration of its 30 year lifespan thus far. Why not leave it up to users to configure their own domestic setup? Do you want to repeat that for the audience? Why not leave it up to users to configure their own domestic setup? To configure their own domestic setup. How do you feel about that? Uh, my girlfriend left me last night for two guys and had a threesome in a hotel, and I'm about to kill myself. And so I'm getting really, really drunk. I think that answers that question. Anyone else have a fortune cookie? I'm going to follow these guys upstairs. Here I go. It's really, it's really noisy up here. So I'm out here. <laughs> this is a storefront for art and architecture. It's pink and it's not green. I'm hoping you can still hear me downstairs. Oh, look who it is. It's Matt Bonner. He's our camera guy, and he's late. Hi. Hey, how are you? Hi, Victoria. Where were you? At the bar? <laughs> I you wish. smell like booze, Matt. I wish I was at work. you got to answer me a question. Hit me. With my best shot. Here. Where are the drinks? I've got the drinks are around the corner. Hold on, Matt. Hold on. This wall's moving. What do you think? I mean, <laughs> come on. Hold on. Here's a question. Yeah. What's different about being of there? Well, I mean, I can only speak about being from Cleveland, and it's... Talk to me about that. It's great. Really, though? Uh, it's like Eastern... If you like Eastern European food, it's good. A lot of snow. There's a big lake. It's a great lake, yeah, Lake Erie. Yeah. It's the dirtiest and the deepest lake really? in the Great Lakes. Okay, fair enough. The dirtiest and deepest man. Yeah, the dirtiest and deepest. Yeah, he lives by. <laughs> no, forget it. The beers are in the back. All right. Are you recording this? Yeah, we're. I'm downstairs, but we can't. Be. Greg's got the camera right here. Hey, Greg. Here. What's up, this. BK? I know. Oh, thank I'm going to ask. Everyone's nicely dressed. <laughs> They're architects. Oh. <laughs> hey, you, uh, you guys know that auto cab? Yeah. Huh? Hey, you guys know Rhino? Yeah. I'm actually yeah. going to look at people and then decide. Okay. I'm going to ask spontaneously. Hi. Can I ask you a question? Go for it. Um. These are these are fortunes from the fortune cookies that are in these um, beautiful pantyhose pods, is what I call them. Now, what is it like to be without a home? Is that a hole? Uh, it's very painless, actually. Like painless? How so? Because you know, I have nothing to worry about, right? You never tried it. Try to think about it. There is a freedom there. It's funny. I asked somebody else this question, and they th they said immediately freedom. So you're the second person who said. That. Plus, you have way more money, especially if you live in New York. What about a roof? You don't have a roof, but you don't need a roof. If you have a friend you can stay with. You know, it doesn't matter. Uh, but still, I mean, like even if you don't, I mean, like uh, you'll find friends. Where are you from? Thank you. What is American architect? 
architecture? What is American architecture? Um, is this the answer? No, that's as long as, as okay, storefronts. That's the answer. But how can I get the answer then? You have to. You have to from think of. Inside. From inside. Okay. I think I've often thought of um, extruding when I work with um, CAD programs. Then you have this extrude function where you have these squares in New York all over. And then I imagine that, that the, the high buildings are just extruded in a way. That's the way I think of it. So American architecture are, are these extrusions yeah. that just keep going up? Rectangles and then just extruded. So in a way, it's a two-dimensional space converted into a three-dimensional space, I think. I think the city has got that, that formula down. I think it's really boring, yeah. personally. Do you think there's a lot of wasted space in those scenarios? No. Not wasted space. Wasted maybe, I don't know. But I, I'm curious, though, because I heard your interjection. You were talking about something, she said it's like New York architecture. California architecture is very different. How would you define American California, Californian architecture? Um, American Californian architecture is meant to be low to the ground, obviously, for the obvious reasons of um, earthquake scenarios or the chances of earthquakes. So um, they're meant to be low, whereas New York, as the other gentleman was mentioning, is high. New York can afford to build higher. Um, still, like, New York can certainly aesthetic. afford to build higher. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we can afford to build higher. <laughs> uh, yeah. And okay, so California is low to the ground. Yes. New York likes to. Yeah. yeah. Like to build up. A little more ego, maybe here. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. It can go both ways. Californian architecture can be widespread as well. It's very lofty, a lot more angular. You see less squares. Are you an architect yourself? No, I just study architecture. So you're you 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 dabble in it, or you you study theory. Dabble in it a lot. <laughs> yes. Hey, yeah. I'm just getting started. Oh, as yes. a Californian, oh, I'd like to ask you who three of your favorite architects are. Well, actually, I'm from New York, and um, three of my favorite architects are uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, Henri Lebrun, who's a French architect. Um, he was the first introduction into steel. I don't like him because he's not American. Yeah. I'm not just kidding. Not a fan of the French. But yeah. The French, are really good the French, I mean, they know how to build. Let's face it. Yeah. They're good innovators. Yeah. And, and the third. And the third. Um, Henri Le Brut, because Le Brut started incorporating the landscape into the, the structural piece. So you didn't just have the building, but you also had the land. Um, and Henri Le Brut was specific to materials. He innovated on steel and glass into architectural pieces. So, And Frank Lloyd Wright, because he's just amazing. You can't not like him. If you don't like him, you got to be a asshole. You have to be an asshole, I agree. I like I like him too. And Andre the Brute twice. I, I have to say thank you so much. You've been so um, lovely to speak with. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We don't get these people down in the basement where we actually are. We Well, we have our studio in the basement here for the duration of the exhibit and no one wants to come down because they're scared of the stairs. So we came upstairs. And there was a couple of deadbolts that came down and they didn't want to answer anything. So we were like, we're going upstairs. You can stay down here and play video games. And that's what they're doing. So we're up here now. Can I ask, can I ask you a question? Yes, of course. Um, I'm, I'm taking a fortune from um, the fortune cookie pod pantyhose. Oh, wonderful. And, and what does it tell you? It says, me? Is it for me? it's asking a question. OK, all right. It's asking this. How can architecture frame and house the spirit of art within? Well, it just has to allow for lots of possibilities. I mean, we don't know what art is going to be, so architecture just has to be open to whatever is possible. 
open yeah, equals better. It? How often? Well, <clears throat> it's not very often open. So I think, you know, creating an architecture that is allowing for different <laughs> situations is really important, <clears throat> especially for art. You can't, you know, I mean, I think one of the challenges of architecture and art is too often the architecture is prescribing what kind of art can happen. Um, so ideally, it wouldn't be doing that, I guess. And the, and the cost of materials and all of that probably has a whole lot to do with... Well, I don't think it's so much about materials. It's more about how do you let space allow for different processes, you know? I mean, I think the best spaces for art are just really open-ended. They're letting something happen within that is whatever the art wants to be. Do you right? have an example of a building which... Well, you know, weirdly enough, I was thinking, just as you said that, um, there's that recent exhibition at the Whitney, which was, I think it was Robert Irwin. It was like an installation that kind of stripped back the architecture of the museum just to the space and then did some very simple things within it that created a really amazing environment. You know, it, there was a scrim and there was daylight and basically that was it. So the architecture was letting the art do the work as it were. Um, so that's great when that can happen. It doesn't interfere, you know, it actually enables. It's a lovely way to look at architecture these days. Thank you so much. This is our broadcast studio. We're going to be in there until January. And we were, we've we decided to come up from the depths. It looks wonderfully dangerous. I love how it's So like, dangerous. Like they didn't yeah. want us to come you up. You fall in there and never come out again. Oh, I know. We built stairs just to come up tonight. They wouldn't let us out of there. Oh, good. It would, trap door. It would be exciting to be trapped down there, right? That's where we've been for far too long. Right. Well, thank you so much. It's good to be upstairs. What is American architecture to you? Um, I Anything, like two words. Private. Private. Interesting. Interesting. What? One word. I'm sorry. Oh, look, dinner's here. Thank you so much. But there's food downstairs. <laughs> Priority, food. Let's go. Looks like we have dinner arriving. If anyone wants anything, feel free. We have vegetable lo mein and um, fried rice and bok choy. Here we are. Back, back down to the dungeon. It's quiet down here. Ooh. Greg, you patched in okay? Okay, buddy. There we go. Here we are. Feedback. Um, so welcome. And this is this is um, where I live. Um, I'm having dinner tonight. I have some guests over. They're leaving early because they're so rude. But it's fine. Uh, yeah, I'll call you. <laughs> um, we we got food. You know, we're on we're on the dole, so we don't do it fancy. But we, you know, it's the good basics. The storefront TV. This is storefront TV. Welcome. Wow, thank you so much. But I really like how you edit things. Well, this is reality, actually. <laughs> There's not we're not doing it. <laughs> we didn't manipulate it. So how long can we stay here before we die? Uh, of the lack of oxygen, yeah. of the uh, whatever? Yeah, of MSG. Um, we, we were asking upstairs a whole bunch of questions. We decided that we absolutely loved the idea of fortune cookies, just because I love them. And uh, you do. I want you to read that. How can we distill beauty from cosmetics? I mean, well, the, uh, let's say, superimposition of Another layer, <laughs> <laughs> cosmetics, uh, a, a kind of artificial surface. What am I doing? I, 
Cosmetics is an artificial surface, yes. Yeah, I don't like this. It's not the, you know, it's not the lucky thing. Yeah. Here we go. Let's, yeah. I'm passing. I would assume that two architects, both of them very much invested in the development of aesthetic projects with very different agendas, would have something to say about the question of how does one actually, how can we distill beauty from cosmetics? Meaning, what is superficial to what is essential in the understanding of beauty? And someone who talks about the body and cosmetics. <laughs> how can we distill beauty from cosmetics? We cannot. we cannot, and we don't need to. So that's my answer, yeah. Uh, it's, I don't need to say any more. I mean, I already said that it's not possible. It's not possible. Yeah. What do you say to that? I think it's possible. <laughs> oh, raising the stakes. All right, tell me why. Uh, photographs and representation, they're, you know, like not you. So this construction of yourself, uh, an idea of another self that's not actually really you. So a fake you is actually a better you in some ways. No? Yeah, yeah, but it's more you. More you. Yeah. So actually it's more authentic. Uh, so you really think you really you guys really think that that is actually more authentic because it's more it's like hyper me. Uh, I mean, I think authenticity and beauty is always constructed, always. So I think the idea of separating cosmetics from beauty is kind of not really necessary. Let's go before the question and uh, set everything in a different way, and then we'll have another cookie. Okay, we'll have another cookie. Okay. Well, I. This is not to me. Yeah. No. I mean, I have to say, I, I, I feel that um, is, is authenticity is the authentic self um, a construct? Then is that is that what we what we're saying? Yes, I think so. I, th I think you know when I'm in bed and let's say I fart and I watch YouTube, uh, I my I'm myself. I'm myself. But it's a really unpresentable self. And so I construct the presentable self, and we all do. And the, the, the presentable self that I constructed is as authentic as, you know, the other self, I think. Uh, but truer to what I believe on the inside, um, and out of respect to others, I don't go around and fart and watch YouTube. But isn't that more about um, uh, how we follow certain normatives? Like, isn't that more of like the idea of an authentic self is still prescribing to um, this idealized form of what it is to be this or that, or what it is to be successful, or healthy, things of that nature? Actually, you know, uh, we're developing now a project on that, here with Eva. And oh, really? And yeah, and, and you should have like the, uh, yeah, which is called Jeans Revolting City. Because actually, I think... Do we have a character yeah. generator? Can you, yeah. do you, can you roll that text? Jeans Revolting City, because I actually think, uh, yeah, jeans, like the jeans, like, no, 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 like the jeans that are inside the body, yeah. Jeans revolting city. Because actually, I think the whole city is now about this, about producing the bodies by transforming them. You know, you go to the nail saloons, you go to the beauty suppliers, all these things are around. So actually, I think this is a key question for our urbanism. Actually, I think that the city is about uh, denying the possibility of this question. Really? <laughs> People. You have to see how people is make, made up in the uh, funeral homes. So they're actually, to be really looking like they, uh, uh, they have to be made up. So uh, the, the grammar of beauty, I guess, the grammar of beauty, right? It's, a, it's not an absolute and we agree upon it. And, and therefore, if I think someone is beautiful, cause it's because time and again we see, we see it and we accept it. And when you say genes, do you mean there is something inherent? Or do you mean there's something we collectively agree? Uh, no, I mean that. Like I'd like to thank your mama yeah. for the way no, you I look tonight. I love my mama. <laughs> I love her genes in me. <laughs> no, I, like, I, I mean uh, uh, the way we relate to genes is also by confronting them. So actually, I really like that because when you go to the uh, very uh, basic thing about how you deal with nature, that is how we deal culturally with genes. Uh, we always want to fight them. We want to fight cancer. We want to fight, uh, you know, if you're blonde, you want to be redhead or whatever. So actually in every... Or a brunette. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, I am. Yeah. <laughs> so actually we want to revolt against them. I think the city is very much about that. 
Don't you think? All the urbanism, at least. I think in the urban context especially. I actually, I feel more and more um, uh, completely at a loss with what happens outside of the ur urban yeah, context. But Monsanto is very much into this project, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I'm not saying it's good, but you know. So even not the city, but the other uh, thing, yeah. Which we don't know which it is, yeah. The grass. Human, not the um, he's also not good looking, so he's forget not it. Not <laughs> he's not into cosmetics. <laughs> he's not into cosmetics at all. Um, no, but that's, it is interesting. I mean, production value and um, what the face of something now, but you see that the face of something now isn't necessarily something that's engaging or maybe even defining a certain era. It's nothing that's actually looking maybe forward. It's still kind of regurgitating a lot of like the old tropes. But what do you feel about that? Like, I feel like that crosses over into many areas in terms of cosmetics. Yeah. If you think about you know, it. What is very good about your question is that also it allows us to see, and uh, it's very good that you talked about production, uh, Jimena, because I think that uh, we also can, because of looking at cosmetics, like they recognize other uh, places where production is happening. Like for instance, hairdressers or uh, beauty salons, or, and, and I'm saying this because they tend to be very disrespected. And I think they're super important. And in my opinion, uh, this idea of production uh, is also related to the Marxism and many ways of uh, thinking the political action that could be then expanded to um, uh, hairdressers. So what could be the revolution of the hairdressers? That would be really amazing. I mean, to maybe bring this back closer to architecture, um, facade making. Yeah. Facade making, and, and you know, facade making, there are companies that do facade making very well. There are uh, offices that, you know, now even write extensive essays arguing only for facades. Um, but I think, and there, there are also critics who write very well about the, for example, the cunning of cos cosmetics uh, as an essay by Jeffrey Kipnis. Uh, and then, you know, there is a discussion about, I, I, I would say, the disguising or the magic making of what what the identity of building or, or the weight of the building uh, becomes reconstructed, uh, and I think um, the specificities of the technique uh, when it comes to the making of the facades uh, that it, that would be the, the treatment of mass to the uh, using surface uh, in architecture uh, is where cosmetics uh, makes buildings beautiful um, and in a collectively agreed subjective. I even think that the other uh, ways of taking this further, for instance, rendering and post-production of the image of buildings in uh, interfaces, for instance. That's really amazing. You know, when you see the interfaces with which buildings are explained to users, for instance, uh, those are really uh, made of cosmetics. And our relationship with those buildings tend to be even more with, uh, by means of those renderings uh, than with the actual, even physical facade. And I really love that, because uh, that's a way of seeing how important it is in the daily uh, experience of architecture, the production of kind of made up uh, images. If I have a, I, 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 t I tend to have an allergic reaction to rendering. I, I, ten, I tend to. Uh, yeah, most I don't even like the word. Yeah, most of the architects do, that's why I like it so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the reason why I, I have a allergic reaction to it is because, you know, it, I'm just coming off of this uh, uh, book launch. Hold it, hold it the right way up. I mean, let's not be too. <laughs> uh, just came from these. The, the Wait, hold on, for God's sake. Okay, here we go. Back from this book launch, uh, and, and it, where there was discussion about, uh, let's say, if we're composers of music, right, what would be germane to the conversation between expert composers, uh, the score? and the thought process behind the scores, not necessarily the performance, and not, and not even necessarily the, the recording. And I would, uh, you know, let's say the construction reality, or re reconstruction reality that the rendering is, uh, would be a recording, uh, a, a single matter recording that may or may not be interesting to other composers. Well, but do you really think that architects are only doing buildings? I really think, I mean, we're all architects doing a TV show and we're all architects uh, saying I like it in Facebook and we're all architects presenting books and we're all, so the life of architecture goes beyond uh, the facades, the material facades. I'm going to interject here because I have a personal qualm with stuff happening in New York right now and this might be bringing it back to a little more of a, you know, 
a, a gal on the streets. But I have to say that there's a lot of, um, I. I feel like there's a lot of safeguarding. There's a lot of like jumping into this kind of safe pool of of glass, which is the same idea as um, in in terms of cosmetics and and the idea of the magazine cover today. There's a lot of just nothing, and that's still seductive. And I think that's really boring. And I think um, I'm wondering about architects today and utilizing within an urban context, especially um, what makes it interesting and what makes something actually different. Like what? What? How? How do you see when you're talking about rendering? You're talking about you know building within the, like an, uh, a contemporary urban context. Let's talk specifically about New York. Why is it that there's so much of of this kind of you know this blanket norm that's happening that's supposed to be seductive, but it, yet it's absolutely nothing at all? I think that I, I haven't seen a lot of architects um, or buildings really truly engage in the area in which they're put into in terms of contemporary yeah, architecture. It's a very good thing and actually in my opinion is because many of those architectures are not built there. Okay. Uh, they're happening elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. Like people are reacting to other things like the way they're decorating their homes or the way they're moving in the territory. They're doing many things that are very exciting when you go with them. Uh, but they're not kind of represented or happening within the facade or within the, all these things that you were mentioning. I think it's super interesting what you're saying. Uh, how can we deal with that? I think part of it is taking those excitements and bring them back into the discipline. That would be one way. The other way is also that I think there could be things that happen simultaneously. Like we actually expand the, the discipline into all those other fields, like going on holidays, traveling, uh, the uh, way people deal with the way they reproduce themselves from their homes and put it in networks and, and Facebook. Yeah. So uh, I think your question is super good. That would be the starting of something. Maybe it's for the next 30 years. Yeah. Okay, well maybe, huh? Maybe, yeah. Hey. With the TV is a good place to do it. Actually, you I, it already. Right? Yeah. I, I have a, a personal love of broadcast as a medium, and I think it's an interesting place. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of people don't. Um, but it's cool. I'm fine. People will catch on again. It's okay. Um, I would like to have applause. Uh, Let's have applause. Yeah. Okay, fine. These, give them a hand. Yeah.